In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the mean of the exponential density function. A very important probability density function is the exponential density function, which takes on the form shown below. To find the mean of this function, we start off with the definition of the mean, and that's stated right here. So the first thing that I'll do is analyze this piecewise function. Take a look at the first part, where t is less than zero. If t is less than zero, we end up with zero, so we don't have to go from negative infinity to infinity, because from negative infinity to zero, that's zero. In the next part, we have t is greater or equal to zero. So what we will do is write it out like this, where we have mu is equal to the integral between zero and positive infinity, and our function will be t times c e to the power of negative c t with respect to t. Next, I'll pull out the factor c because that's a constant. We don't need to integrate that, so I'll pull that out here. This becomes c times the integral between zero and infinity t times e to the power of negative ct dt. And our job right now is to take the integral of this function. Notice that this integral, however, is an improper integral. And the reason why I say that is because in one of our bounds, we have infinity. That being said, we'll have to take the limit later on and replace this infinity with an arbitrary constant. In fact, we can do that right now, but I'll just leave it the way it is. How do I take the integral of this expression? What we'll have to do is use integration by parts. We need to set one of these factors as u and the other factor as dv and dt. What we will choose for u is this t, and my dv will be e to the power of negative ct dt. Let me show you what I mean. So I have u is equal to t, and I'll take the derivative implicitly with respect to t. This gives us du is equal to, the derivative of t is 1, and that's dt. And I've set this part equal to dv. So I have dv is equal to e to the power of negative c t dt. This is a differential equation and I need to integrate both sides. So I'll integrate the left side and the right side. Integrating the left side, I end up with v. And integrating the right side, I'll have to do a substitution here where I set this part equal to another constant. I'll call that constant k. So k is set to negative c t, taking the derivative implicitly with respect to t. I end up with dk is equal to negative c dt. dt, therefore, is equal to dk over negative c. So I'll place this right here, where I have the integral of e to the power of k dk over negative c. Pulling out this negative c, that's a constant. That gives us 1 over negative c times the integral of e to the power of k dk. The integral of e to the power of k is itself. So we have 1 over negative c e to the power of k, which I'll replace back with negative c t. And when you integrate by parts, the formula is the following, where we have u times v minus the integral of v times du. We know that du is equal to dt, so I'll place that there. We found v to be the following, so I'll place that into there and into here. And u, we set it as t. So let's go ahead and make those changes. We have t times this, where we have 1 over negative c times e to the power of negative c t minus the integral of the same expression, 1 over negative c e to the power of negative c t times my du, which happened to be dt. I can pull out this 1 over negative c, and if I pull it out, out here, and multiply it by negative 1, I end up with 1 over c times the integral of e to the power of negative c t dt, and this part becomes t over negative c e to the power of negative c t. And in between these two terms is plus. And don't forget that this expression is being multiplied to that original c that I pulled out over here. So before we multiply this c into these two terms, I want to integrate the following. And remember we integrated this above. We integrated it over here. So all I'm going to do is take this expression and replace it with the following, giving us c times t over negative c 
times e to the power of negative ct plus 1 over c. And like I said, I'll be replacing that with this. Multiply to 1 over negative c e to the power of negative ct, close bracket, close bracket. Now if I multiply this c into this term, this c and this c will cancel out, leaving us with negative t e negative ct. Multiplying this into here cancels out one of these where we have negative 1 over c e to the power of negative ct. Now that I've finished integrating, I need to evaluate this at infinity and zero. I mentioned earlier that this was an improper integral because of this infinity. So I'm going to replace infinity with an arbitrary value, let's call it w, and I'll take the limit instead of evaluating it at infinity, which is impossible, where t approaches w. I'm going to replace all of these t's with w, where I have negative w e to the power of negative c times w, minus 1 over c e to the power of negative c times w. This will be subtracted with when I set t is equal to 0. So if I replace this t with 0, it becomes 0. And replacing this t with 0, I end up with e to the power of 0, which is 1. And this gives me 1 times negative c, which is minus 1 over c. Now I have to take the limit of these two terms. Taking the limit of this term to infinity, what we have to do is use L'Hopital's rule. Because if I change this into infinity and this into infinity, then I have infinity times infinity, and that's the problem. So if I use L'Hopital's rule, and I'll show it right here, I have negative w over e to the power of negative cw. And according to L'Hopital's rule, I can take the derivative of the top, where I end up with negative 1, and take the derivative of the bottom, where I end up with e to the power of negative c w times, and the derivative of this is negative c. So taking the limit now, with this being infinity, I'll end up with a number over a very large number, which is equal to 0. When this term approaches infinity, we have e to the power of a very small number, and that is equal to 0 as well. So we have 0 plus 0 minus negative 1 over c, which becomes 1 over c, because we have negative times negative, and that is what is equal to mu. And if I solve for c right now, I end up with 1 over mu is equal to c. Remember that, because I'm going to now replace this c and this c with 1 over mu. This gives me f at t is equal to, that top part stays the way it is, and the bottom part becomes e to the power of negative t over mu, and the denominator of this term is mu, when t is greater or equal to zero. And we can use this formula, for example, if you're trying to find the average waiting time, you'll be waiting for a call to be answered by a representative. Let's say the probability after five minutes. You can use this formula to do that. And there you have it. That is how to find the mean of the exponential density function.